my friends, this is Marie at Living Felt, and today we are needle felting mushrooms. You can make yours any size, shape, or color you like. You can even give them a fancy little bottom. This is a super easy project, a great skills builder for future creations, and we're going to have some fun making them. So join me and I'll show you how. We are needle felting mushrooms today, and this is just a quick look at a few samples. Your mushrooms can be any size, shape, or color you like. And I just want to point out a few things. We're going to look at how to do a freestanding mushroom, and I'll also show you how to create one that can be mounted onto a bigger project. We'll look at this fancy base. We'll look at how to get a really smooth finish so that you don't show any needle marks. And well, I just also want to point out done versus not done when it comes to needle felting. So these two little blank mushrooms are ready for color, or you could leave them plain if you wanted. One is very firm and one is rather soft. You could go either way, but they are both finished. And these two are not finished. They're still in the draft mode. They're very, very squishy. This one is very squishy and lumpy. And on either one, I could kind of pull it apart if I wanted to. So depending on the purpose of your project, you probably want to needle felt them more so that you couldn't just pull them apart. Whether they're soft or very firm, we want them to be fully compacted so that they don't come apart if they get handled. And they actually seem to attract dust less and you can make them smoother when they're better felted. So let's look at a few of the materials you'll need. For tools, we're starting off with our Earth Harmony foam. This is our 10 by 15, so it's a nice big work surface. We will be using a variety of felting needles. I like to keep mine and this little fairy garden pin cushion that I've made, and we'll show you that on a future tutorial. The primary needle sizes we'll be using are our 36 gauge, which is a coarse needle. We make it pink. Uh, plain, this is a 38 spiral. I like that. We have a few different 38 sizes and a 42 triangle, which is very fine. You can use whatever you have. This is just what we'll use today. We'll use some pipe cleaners and you can use some other kind of wire armature. These are just real easy to work with. One will make a large mushroom or two smaller mushrooms. You might want some scissors and perhaps some wire cutters. Then for fiber, we are using today Living Felt Core Wool. This is our CW1 Core Wool. It's a really lofty batting and you can tear it to very thin lengths. It's very easy to work with and compacts well. We'll also be using our MC1 Merino Cross. And there's all kinds of colors you can get that in. So go for realistic or fantasy, whatever you like. This is um, like our core wool. It's all from domestic sheep and it's washed in an environmentally friendly process. It's not carbonized. So sometimes you get a little bit of vegetable matter, but it comes in over 75 colors. It needle felts and wet felts really well. And you can even pull off little teeny tiny pinches for great detail. So it's nice to work with. And that's about all you need to get started on our project today. To start, we'll start with our core wool and we only need a, a long strip. I just want to show you how I tear it. It's really easy to work with and what I like to do is fold it in half and tear it into a narrow strip. And you'll find that with projects like this, the way we use the fiber, it's easier to work with it in a long strip rather than short, a long narrow strip rather than short and wide ones. So tear yourself a thin strip and then go ahead and divide the thickness to about half. So find whatever feels like the middle point, I'll go to this side, and then split it in half. Then take your pipe cleaners and decide if you want to make a large one, then just fold this completely in half. And if you want to make a small one, go ahead and cut it and give it just a little crook here. For time's sake, I'll go ahead and start with a small one for us. And take your strip of core wool. This is mine. I'm going to go ahead and divide this one down. Take your strip of core wool and whether you're 
pipe cleaner is in half or just bent like this, go ahead and trap your wool underneath so that this is anchoring it down and twist it towards yourself. As you twist, hold very tight tension here and here. Not so tight that you pull the fiber off. It's a short fiber, so you don't want to pull too much, but you want this to be well compacted. The more compacted it is, the less time it takes to needle felt. Then I like to turn it around and twist away from me. I don't know why, I just feel like I have a lot more control, often twisting the wire rather than flipping the wool over. So we're gonna go down just to the end of the wire and then tear it off. We're gonna do this a couple of times. You'll find it's easier to build up layers than to put a big one on and have to compress all the fiber. So notice that I'm using my hand to hold the fibers basically while I twist and we're actually dry felting a little bit. So for this, you might use your 38 gauge needle or whatever you have and needle felt up and down the entire length of your stem until the fibers are well compacted. Needle felt towards the middle. Don't needle felt all the way through. There's no need to use some kind of punch tool because if you needle felt all the way through, the fibers are gonna come out fuzzy on the other side. So just needle felt towards the center. If you want your piece to be really, really rock hard, go ahead and use your 36 gauge needle now and you'll notice that the poking action with a coarse needle is a little more pronounced and defined. It's less bouncy because you're trying to drive those really coarse barbs through the fiber and requires just a little more strength, but you still wanna to go towards the middle. So firm up your stem. For the moment, I'm gonna leave this part loose. We're gonna add more wool right here where the mushroom cap goes. So you can make it a little bit taller than you want it to be, but we're just gonna start with the base layer at first. You can tack this down and then again, twisting away from myself. Now, if you want it to be rounded, um, we're still gonna build up the same layer, but if you want it to be rounded, come off the top of your stem just a little bit more so you leave a little more room. But if you want it to be pointy as I do, you can even hold pressure here so that it's a little more tapered as you roll and you can also roll it in your hands. Again, we're holding pressure. I don't want it to be too lofty. We can add wool for that, for it to be bigger and beefier. And this is just the first layer. But use your fingers as a stopping point right here. Wrap the wool around. Use your hands again to kind of get the fibers to lay down. And notice it looks just kind of like a bit popsicle. This is only our first layer. So again, with your felting needle, this is the 38. I'm just gonna shape the top. You get all those loose fibers laying down. Then you can go right into the bottom and start to form that shelf. You might like your 36 gauge needle for this. You'll notice that it really pushes the wool. Notice how much more that pushes it. So you start to form that shelf right away and then as you needle felt, you can work into it. Now at this stage, Keep needle felting your mushroom cap and shaping it, and don't worry about it condensing. Just go for finishing this layer and then deciding whether you want to add another layer on top. It's easiest to needle felt all around the mushroom cap rather than just spend time in one place. So 
So from this point, keep needle felting your mushroom cap and working on this area and even go back and you can needle felt the base until you get the size and the dimension that you like. Okay, so now we're gonna add some color to ours and just choose any amount you like. You need a very thin amount of batting here so you can definitely split that thickness. You don't want it so thin that you can see the white underneath when you apply it, but we want to put down just as much wool as we need. So just kind of figure out how much it will take. You can just pull off the balance and the top, this wraps around, the top can extend just a little bit and it can be really that, that sort of rough. The nice thing about the batting is that you can um, pull off little tufts and patch in wherever you need. So I'm just going to needle felt this down and notice now that I'm using my yellow needle. This is our 42 gauge triangle. It's very fine and you can use just a few barbs. So the barbs are concentrated between here, that's hard to see that, the, the barbs go from here, here, and here. So you can go to a depth of just one barb, two barbs, or three barbs. And that's what's so nice about this tool is you can do really shallow strokes and it makes it perfect for surface design. And when we're putting on a collar such as this, that is surface design. So wrap this kind of firmly around. If you have any little tiny bits of vegetable matter, just pull it out. So you can see how quickly this is coming together. As your fibers start to get more compressed and you see how sort of lumpy and bumpy it looks, your strokes can get more and more shallow and you can even angle your needle so that you're almost going perpendicular. And this is going to create less needle marks as you work, especially if you're working with a fine needle. So we're gonna switch up here to up close and I'm gonna show you how to work those final stretches to get out the needle marks. This is a mushroom I've been working on and you can see if you look really closely that it's very difficult to see the needle marks. You might see one right there and one right there that you could kind of flick out with your needle, but this is very well compressed already and it doesn't look lumpy and bumpy like this one does. That's a result of just using this felting needle, one compressing it very evenly and two being very gradual about that, doing very light gentle strokes. Now what I want to say is when I see these holes, rather than think of getting rid of holes, I think that what I need to do is to compress this fiber here down to the same depth. So I'll attack it very gradually, very shallow, and going at different angles, even turning the piece 
so that I'm coming at it from different angles and constantly viewing it. Now, some cases what's fun is your foam helps you work out those, but only once it starts to get really firm. So I'm going to turn it over to this side where I've marked this with my pins to show you that you can still see more needle marks on this side than you can on this side. So this is the side we're going to look at. When you get to this stage, if you are having fun with it, I love this stage of really that fine detail. We're just doing shallow, shallow, shallow pokes. It's difficult for me to see sitting back so far because I like to get really up close to my work at this stage. It's very meditative, very intimate with your piece. But if you just do these shallow strokes only using about that first barb on your fine felting needle, vary the angle, and then once it starts to get more compressed, like really compressed, you can rub it and it's not coming apart, you can drag your needle across it this way and notice we don't have fuzzies coming out or anything and just or you can use your hands even but it needs to be really compressed or otherwise the fuzzies are just going to show more in this case we've gotten rid of fuzzies and we've really smoothed it out so have fun with that detail to get this fancy underneath side I don't know the technical name, but to get this little fancy swirly stuff happening down here, we used our batting and sort of over twisted it like you might a yarn. So I do have some yarns here. We didn't use these, but if you do have some yarns, these are wool yarns, thick and thin, or just a big thick yarn, you might use those instead. But if you don't have that, you can kind of create your own. So pull off a really thin strip of fiber and maybe even tie one end into a knot just to kind of hold it in place. You can use a pin, this is just a T-tack, hold it in place. And we're going to sort of do what you might do if you were spinning a yarn and that is we're going to twist it and draft it out a little bit more and above the area where you drafted it out, twist. And we want to twist to such a degree that when you release the tension, it kind of curls back in on itself. Some and some not, some and some not. You can take this piece, you can just go a little ways and do the rest on your, on your mushroom. So hold on to this. I'll pick one of my mushrooms here. Here's this guy, he's round. And needle felt the knot. Just go ahead and needle felt that knot in place underneath there. Tack that down. And you might want to hold your mushroom in place too. So I'll use my pen just to kind of anchor it down because we need to pull back off it. So you'll, with it anchored in there, you can twist it and just let it loop down. And this is really the key, is not trying to control it so much. And then needle felt it in place. Pull this back. Use my 36. Draft this back and twist. And anchor him down. It helps if you can moisten your finger a little bit just to kind of grab onto the fiber. Otherwise it might seem challenging. And then twist and twist and let it loop in there and then needle felt that in.
For the bottoms of your mushrooms, just think about whether you want them to be standalone, like you might make something small to wear as jewelry, or you might want this just in a display on a nature table or for something to play with, a child to play with. So you can just finish off the bottom and the best thing to do there is to go ahead and bend your chenille back in on itself and then underneath the wool and then wrap the wool around there to finish it. And that's because these wires always want to seek their way out. I don't know why, but they'll continue poking through the wool. So if you want to finish that, just bend the chenille in. If you don't, if you want to mount it on something else, so if you're making your own little fairy garden or a little nature display, fluff the wool out at the base and cut this off well beneath the level of the fiber so that you have room to work. And then you can fluff this fiber out and needle felt it directly onto whatever your scene is. Like in this case, if we were putting it on our fairy garden, then we could use that wool to fluff it out and needle felt it right on and it'll hold. That's all for today, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. If you make your mushrooms, we hope you'll share them with us on our Facebook page or send them to submissions at livingfelt.com. Make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed this lesson for more. And go to our website to sign up for our newsletter and join our community on facebook.com. Whatever you do, make it a great day. Treat yourself well because you deserve it. And as always, happy felting.